By the end of this video, we'll have learned how to use interfaces to create generic items in our game and get our player to collect them with a collector. Very exciting, learning some cool code tricks. In case you haven't used them before, an interface is like a contract where you define methods that classes that use that interface must implement. In our case, we're going to create an interface for I item, so anything that we can pick up. So we're going to say anything that's an item must have a collect function. The item we're going to define will be a gem and we'll implement the I item interface. So our gem must include a collect method. So we'll add collect and in here write the functionality that collect will do for a gem. This is then handy when you have different items you want to pick up. So like when we pick up gems, it'll increase our progress. When we pick up a health item, it can increase increase our health and lots of other ideas you may have for your game. <laughs> but that's it. We can get started now. Cool. First of all, since we're going to add some new scripts, more than just our player movement, we're going to create a new folder in our assets and call this scripts. I'm going to drag our player movement into that and then open up our scripts folder. I'm going to right click and create a new C sharp script and call this I item. So let's open this up and create our interface. So for this, we don't want it to be mono behavior. It's just going to be an interface. And instead of public class, we're going to be public interface. And we won't have start or update. And nice and simple, all we need is public void collect. That's all we need for now. But if we ever wanted our items to add any more functionality, we add it in this one place and it'll be easy to update all our other items. Back in Unity, we'll create our script for our gem. So right click, create C sharp script this gem and double click to open it up. Now in here we're already implementing mono behavior. You can implement multiple interfaces so you can go comma by item. It has a red underline. If you hover over you can see it's saying because we don't have our collect functionality. So what you can do really easy is click show potential fixes and then implement interface. This makes our collect for us. Remove start and update. For now we'll keep it simple. So when we collect our item we're going to destroy this game object. So when we pick up our item it'll disappear. Cool. Back in Unity, we'll go to our player. And since we have a nice big script for player movement, we'll close this off and create a new script and call it a collector. In our collector script, we're going to use on trigger enter 2D to see when we've bumped into an item to pick it up. First, I'm going to add another collider. So I'm going to add a circle collider 2D to our player and click is trigger. We already have a box collider 2D, but this one isn't trigger so that we can touch the ground. So we'll use this circle collider as our pickup. You can see it's quite small around our player. You could make this bigger if you want to have a bigger pickup range. I'm just going to keep it wrapped around our player for now. And there's a big gizmo on top of our player. Uh, on the top right, there's this ball looking thing with the dots. If you click on that, it hides the gizmo. So you, now you can see our collider. Cool. So let's open up our collector script by double clicking on it. And in here, we want to get rid of these. And we can say on trigger and 2D. Now we're going to check if our collision is an item. To do this, we can use our I item interface which also makes it handy to keep all your items generic and pick up any without worrying about what type they are. So we'll say I item item equals collision dot get component I item. And we'll say if item is not null, and that means we have got an item. So we can call item dot collect. And that's it, nice and simple. Now back in Unity, we can create our gem. Let's right click and go 2D object sprite. I'm just going to go for an isometric diamond. So I'm going to name this gem and I'm going to go on add component and add the gem script. And I'm also going to want to add a circle collider 2D. Then I'm going to set this to is trigger and drag the gem from our hierarchy over into our assets to make it a prefab. And then we can drag lots out to be multiple gems in our scene. Now, when we press play and walk into our gems, you can see they're being destroyed. On our sprite renderer, I'm going to change the color. Then on our gem, I'm going to go to the animation window, drag this down the bottom and click create. I'm going to go to our animations folder and call this gem. And in our sprites folder, on our tile map, if you open it up, just found some free gem sprites. So what I'm going to do is select all of these and drag them into our gem animation. Change the scale back to be one by one. You can see it's very fast, a little too fast. <laughs> so I'm going to add in the two more sprites of them getting smaller next to that biggest one. Select them all by doing control A and then drag out the last one for about one second. Now when we press play you can see it does this kind of it's like but I can't think of what to call it. You see you can see what it does. Now I'm just going to drag one of these into our default sprite in our sprite renderer and you can see none of our other prefabs have changed of our gem. To get these all to update in our inspector in the top right you can see there's a drop down that says overrides. If you click on this and then click apply all you can see they've all changed. And when we press play now we got some cool looking gems. Very appealing. Makes me want to pick them up. Wow Oh, gotta get them. Cool, and that's it for this video. In the next video, I'm going to make when we pick up our items, count towards the progress of our level and add a slider so we can see that progress going up. And to do that, we're going to use actions and events. So we'll learn another cool code trick, which is very handy for any future games you want to make. See you then.